Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Python programming. In this video we will be taking a brief introduction into what is a function. So a function in Python is a group of related statements that performs a specific task or tasks. Now functions help break our program into smaller and modular pieces of code and it's very good and very uh, convenient to use functions to make uh, our code organized and manageable especially as our overall program grows larger. It also helps us to avoid repetition and makes the code reusable. So let's look at the basic way of defining a function. So this is a basic function that I'm calling fun underscore name. All right. Now the rest of the function or whatever the task is going to be performed by this function will be written over here with an indent of course as a standard when it comes to Python. So I'm going to define this one uh, something in triple uh, double quotes. So don't worry about what this is right now. This is a doc string. Don't worry about uh, what this means and I'll explain it to you just in a short bit. All right. Now, now the rest of the statement, the rest of it uh, will obviously be what this uh, function will do. Let's include a simple print statement. All right. It's uh, done here. And let's call this. So of course, now once you define the statement uh, a function to call the function, you just have to use its name like this. This is how you call a function. So as you can see, when I call this function, it should print the statement hello. Now let's go, let's uh, look at some of the, uh, like what happened over here. So we've used the keyword def to define a function. We give it a unique name, which makes it, uh, which with which we uh, uniquely identify this function. Um, and also once we've done this, we, um, we can give it, uh, we can give this function a particular header. Uh, it's called a doc string. So what this doc string is basically something that we include in triple quotes over here just after the div, the def keyword. And um, this is like a brief, we can use this to give a brief, uh, inf give brief information into what our function is doing. So we can say this is, uh, this function performs addition, this performs um, subtraction or whatever, like some basic information as to what our function does. So we can use a doc string for that. Um, of course, this is an optional thing. This does not have to be, we don't have to include this as well. All right. But for the sake of this, let's just keep it here. After that, of course, rest of the function uh, will contain whatever tasks we want to do with it. And that will be indented. Um, finally, we can also include a return keyword. And what the return keyword does is um, at any point you find the return keyword in a function, you immediately leave the function. And you go back to where this uh, function was called. Okay. So now let's see. Um, now there's also one more important, uh, component of defining a function and that's parameter. Now, if you've noticed over here within these parentheses, I did not include anything. This is like an empty parenthesis opening and closing. What if I said a, if I included some a and b over here. So what this means is whenever I call this function, I need to pass two parameters a and b. These can be like strings or numbers or whatever. Um, but now it becomes almost mandatory that I pass these two things for my function to, uh, to work. So let's define a function where I'm going to add a and b. So instead of this print statement, let's do this. I create a variable c and in that I'm storing a plus b. All right. And then I return c. So you can use a return and you can, you, you can return certain like uh, variables along with the return statement. So I'm saying not only return from this function, but also give an output or return an output called c, which is the addition of a and b. Now, how do we use this? Well, now, instead of just uh, calling the function like this, I'm going to add para, I'm going to include parameters. So I'm saying pass two and three to function name where two will take the place of a and three will take the place of B. All right. What will happen now is addition will take place and we will get returned the result. So let's see what happens now, as you can see two plus three and I got the return, the addition of two plus three and I, it returned me five. So yeah, this was like a basic uh, usage of a function and parameters. So of course, uh, we can, if you want to know like what a, what the doc string of a particular function does or, or says, uh, you can use this uh, particular, you can use this like um, statement. So let's say, if, uh, so uh, it's very important to like, just keep a, a note in your, uh, while you're going through this or while you're learning that uh, whenever we use some sort of a function, which has double uh, underscore, right? This is like a built in a built-in command provided by Python um, within the Python library itself. So these are like built-in commands to check certain details. So I want to check what is a doc string and this is how I do it. So let's do print. Let's print what is the doc string over here. 
this is a doc string. So this is basically what I wrote over here. I can change this to this, like this does addition, for example. All right. Now this will say this does addition when I execute this line. So this is the way to check what is a doc string. Anyways, so now that you have seen a uh, basic um, basic function or two basic functions that I defined for you and how we use them, what a parameter is, let's look at uh, another concept that we call uh, scope and lifetime of variables. So scope of a variable is the portion of the program where the variable is recognized. All right. Now a parameter and a variable that are um, defined inside a function are not visible from outside the function. This is a very key thing. Uh, so if we define something within the function, we can only use it within this function and we cannot like we cannot use it once the function has already been executed. So as to speak, um, these variables and these parameters uh, have what we call as local scope since they are only um, recognized within a particular function. Now the lifetime of a variable is the period throughout which the variable exists in the memory itself. And um, it's very important to note that lifetime of variables that are defined inside a function um, are as long as the function executes. Um, once we return from a function, uh, whatever we have defined within it are destroyed. So when uh, we use a function, um, it will not remember the values of a variable from a, a previous iteration of a function call. So let's uh, try to understand this example or this concept using certain examples. So out here, I have defined a function where I'm going to create a variable my underscore var my variable and I am going to store the value 10 in this and then I'm going to print. So whenever I call this function, I will always create this variable. I will store 10 and I will print the value of this. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not only going to create this my var inside this function. I'm also going to create a variable outside. So you see there now you, you might be confused as to okay how is the behavior going to be because outside the function I have created my var with a value 20 but inside the function I will always define my var as 10 okay now I'm going to print so my first what I'm going to first do is I'm going to execute this function that I created initially where I stored the value of 10 in my var and then I'm going to print print the value of my var that was present outside the function let's see what happens you can see two different things happening so when I execute this function it prints the value inside the function as 10. But when I print the next line, which says, um, okay, now get the value of my var, um, it actually prints a value of 20. And this is a very key concept because what's happening here is when I initially call my function, within this function, it creates a variable called my var and it prints the value as 10. And the moment my function has been executed, it destroys this variable. And um, the variable which contained the value 10 is of course now destroyed and all we have is the my var that contains 20 from the outside. And when we print that, we get the respective value as 20. So you can also think of it like this. The my var that is present inside this function is different to the my var that we create outside. So the scope of the my var within this function is local only to this function. And once the function is executed, that variable is destroyed. All right. Now let's look at a another case or the other side of this case where um, say we're dealing with variables that have a global scope. How do we deal with them? So let's create a variable called my var. All right. And I say I store 100 in this. All right. Now if I define a function, I've stored my var. Let's say I define a function. Define underscore say again, same name. Where what I'm going to do in this is I am going to print the value of whatever is there in my var. Okay, so let's do print um, value of variable is value stored in variable is okay. Let's uh, my var. So let's see what happens when we do this. Let's call this function one underscore name. Let's see what happens here. So as you can see the value I stored a value 100 in my var and I've called it inside the function. And this is because since I've defined it outside, I can use it inside as well. Now, what if I try to change the value of um, this variable inside the function though? So let's see if I did this and now if I try to print, let's see, do, is this allowed? No, it's not allowed. In fact, I get an error. It says local variable my var reference before assignment. Um, and without going too much into detail, what it's saying is that the variable inside over here is still local to this function. 
and I have not defined this myWare as a global variable. So I cannot make changes to it within this function right now. And uh, to change that, I can use the global keyword. What if I did global over here? So if I did global, and now if I said, okay, global myWare, and I declare this variable as a global variable. Now if I do this, now if I do the same incrementation, now let's see what happens when I'm trying to do this. You see, I get the value 101. This is exactly what I wanted. And that is because I've defined my variable to be a global variable within this function. So I can, in fact, make changes to it within this function. So this is how we use the global keyword and global variable. Uh, also, just to make a quick note, um, there are three types of functions, uh, the three types of categories in which we can divide functions. First one being built-in functions. Uh, these are the ones that are built into the standard library of Python. The other is user-defined function. That is the ones which we define ourselves. And the third type is called anonymous functions. Um, they're also known as Lambda functions. And this is something that we're going to cover in a separate video. Now let's talk about the arguments that we pass in Python. So there are four types of arguments that uh, Python user-defined functions can take. First one being default, the other one is required, then there is keyword, and then there is variable number of arguments. So the default argument is when, say, um, if I defined a function where underscore, sorry, fun underscore name, and I'm saying a comma b, right? But what if um, the user has not, um, like, say I, I, I want a default value of a and b each time when I uh, use this function. So in the case where if, say, I don't pass a value for a and b, like this will always be used. So I can just say a is equal to two by default and b is equal to three by default. And then within this function, I will say c is equal to a plus b and then return c. So I do this and if I say fun underscore name, and in case I don't pass any arguments here, let's see what happens. By default, I get the answer five because by default a is two and b is three, but this is not fixed and I can always change this by passing my own values here, five and six. And in this case, I should get 11, as you can see here. Now the next type is uh, required arguments. And when we are defining a required argument, we just simply do not use the equal to sign for the parameters over here. And this basically, um, it makes it so that now anytime we call this function, we have to pass something over here. So now if I try to pass like this, I won't get a, oops, yeah. I won't get a default value. Then that's because, um, uh, that's because, well, there is no default value and it needs an A and B. So I have to pass it a three and say four. Now it should give me seven, as you can see. The next type of argument that we'll be talking about are the variable number of arguments. So let's look at an example here. So what I'm doing in this particular example is I'm defining a function called my sum, where I'm passing some parameter called my integers and I'm doing something out here. And what this does is um, it will take the values of a particular like collection of objects and that's called my integers and each value I'm going to keep adding it to each other and I'm going to result a particular sum. I'm just uh, going to result the sum of whatever is there. So in this case, what happens is I'm creating a list uh, one, two, and three, which contains one, two, and three. And then I'm going to print the summation of whatever is there. So it should give me six. Now, the problem in this case is that each time when I'm going to perform this uh, function, I have to create a separate list where I'm going to store these objects. But what if I didn't, I do not know like what exactly I'm going to pass here. What if I don't know if it's going to be a list of objects or like, what is it going to be exactly? Well, in that case, I can use a variable, uh, variable, uh, key, variable number of arguments. So it's, it's like a variable keyword argument. So what we use here is, um, a specific way of passing, um, keywords and we do it like this. So I say define my under, underscore name and I use an asterisk. Now I give it any name. This can be args. This can be integers. It doesn't really matter what this is, but it's just, this is the key, the asterisk here. And this tells us that whatever we pass here is now, if we're supposed to create an iterable out of this, and then we can perform whatever task we want. So let's just, uh, since I've already created one here, let's see how I'm going to use it in this case. So as you can see, I'm doing, uh, I'm creating a particular uh, variable argument function over here and I'm doing the same task. I'm just going to keep uh, performing, edit, uh, I'm going to add whatever I pass over here. But now when I'm calling this function, I don't need to create a separate list as I did over here. I'm just passing all the numbers that I want to in the form of like, it's pretty much like a tuple. So I'm just passing these numbers here. And what this function is going to do is, is going to create an iterable out of this. And then we're going to iterate over it. As you can see, that's happening over here. And I can keep, uh, I don't need, uh, I, I can just keep like, uh, so since I've, 
uh, done it for 1, 2, 3, and 7. The summation should be 13 in this case. I can add another number here just explicitly just like this and you can see the value will change and that's because this is a variable uh, this is a variable argument uh, method of uh, creating a function now the fourth type of uh, function arguments is the variable keyword uh, argument so let's look at what is the keyword argument now so I have defined a function here called the concatenate function and let's see what I'm going to do with this so in this I have passed a keyword argument I've said that, okay, this is going to be a keyword argument uh, function. And what I'm going to do in this is I'm going to create a blank string. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, or I'm going to concatenate certain strings that I'm going to pass to this function. So I, in this example, I have passed Python and is and cool and an exclamation mark, all separate strings. And what I'm going to do in this function is I'm going to join them together. Um, and I'm going to create one whole string out of it. Let's see what's the result. Python is cool. So this is, so of course, like, uh, if I had to add some, some something else, like Python is say, um, cool and say, I just wanted to say hello and say one more string. I can add, I, I can add it just like this. I don't have to like define a fixed number of arguments. I can add, pass any number of arguments I want. And this works exactly the same as variable in the uh, only differences instead of positional uh, arguments. We're using keyword arguments over here. Hello, bye. Like this it doesn't really make sense, but just to show you, as you can see. So this is how we use keyword arguments. Well, this is it for um, this introductory video into functions in Python. I hope you uh, uh, learned a bit about defining functions and sort of the keywords and the components that uh, are part of function definitions, such as keywords and um, uh, I mean arguments and um, doc string, for example. Uh, you also saw the different types of arguments that we can pass. Um, and yeah, I hope uh, this was a good introduction into what is uh, functions in Python and uh, I hope to see you in the next video.